I was very worried about the driving and the fact that most people have never been over here before and it was a grueling trip. It was uh, comparing it to ocean and o ocean and ocean, which was probably the most grueling trip as far as mileage on a day-to-day -day basis. This one was a lot less mileage, but the amount of shifting and turning and the type of roads we took made it grueling both on the cars and on the drivers. And it's a wonder that we all survived. How did the idea for the COB come up? When we were going on the Ocean Ocean in 1986, and we were also going through a record heat wave at the time. During the desert crossings, there was one particular restaurant. I was sitting with Dick Knudsen, and we were talking about the heat. And I said, the next time we run a trip like this, let's go to a nice, cool, rainy, comfortable place so we could drive our cars without the heat and the perspiration. Like a place like England. And Dick replied, okay, it's a good idea. You do it. Now, I thought he was kidding, but at the next gathering of the faithful, on the agenda was marked a seminar on plans to go to England, Mike Lexstein. And that's how it started. When the customs clears the cars, 10 at a time will pack up their cars and they'll go off in a group. As soon as the first group goes off, the next 10 will get their luggage and pack up. We'll call off the names. It's the only way to do it. It'll take an extra 15, 20 minutes this way, but it won't be crazy. It's very dangerous going through there. We're going to be escorted through because of all the forklift. They're, loading that they're unloading that ship very quickly. Um, we didn't volunteer for the job. We were volunteered. <laughs> um, it was one of those things that, that turned, turned out. We are interested in, in driving around and in maps, and that, uh, and that was we were volunteered for the job, and that's how we put it all together. So how did you go about doing the route? Well, we, we didn't in any way plan any of the stops or the hotels. That was already fixed. Um, we had no control over that. They, we were presented with the outline of the route. Um, we then looked at that and said, well, now, what is the shortest distance between these points without using, as far as possible, main roads, um, motorways? Uh, that didn't really work, so in the end we had to incorporate motorways. But what we tried to do was to say, right, well that's the shortest distance, and then look alongside that and say which is to be the prettiest way to go, and try and amalgamate the two, try and incorporate a, a, a practical journey between the two points, bringing in as many interesting places that we, we, we would see on the route. So how long did it take you and your wife Andrea to make up the route? Um, we worked on it for about, I suppose, a couple of weeks of evenings, um, a couple of weeks of evenings to, before we went out on the road, just sort of wrapping up what we thought was a practical route round. Uh, once we'd done that, um, we then said, well, the only way we can do now is to actually go out in the car, drive around the whole route, uh, and try and get, check it and see what it, it looked like on the ground. Um, that took us five days. We drove, the, drove around the 1,900 odd miles of the main route in, in the five days and writing it all down. Our first two days we spent in Chester, a well-preserved walled city.
in the process of looking for the spot of the 1925 Cecil Kimber famous photograph. Yeah. I think you're, I think certainly. There's no question in my mind that that is it. I thought about that. Kimber was photographed at Blue Hills Mine in Old Number One during the Land's End Trial of 1925. The area is still used today for similar trial runs. And if you see pictures of Blue Hills Mine in the 1920s, 1930s, um, the sides of the, of, the, of, the, of the route were just lined with people. Um, most of them had never driven a car, but they turned out on the day to have a look at this spectacle of, of these mad people trying to climb these hills. Bewley Palace House was originally the gatehouse to Bewley Abbey, founded in the 13th century. It is now the home of Lord Montague. Bewley was the site of a large MG gathering in concourse judging, hosted by the register. Thank you. There we are. Look at that lot, huh? Jim Simpson worked at the factory for 50 years. I don't know if you saw, did, when you came away from there today, uh, down Cemetery Road, on the right-hand side, a chap in a wheelchair. Don't think uh, he, an ex-employee, he's, he's had a stroke. He can't walk, he can speak. A little chap named Jock Cameron. And he watched the cars go by, and he, the tears streamed down his face. And, and he wasn't there very long, you know. Uh, I, I must say, I, I felt a lump in the throat about it all. Crossing the River Tweed, we entered Scotland. The Peebles Hotel Hydro has been operating since 1907. It is a resort-type spa in the old world tradition. Its elegant atmosphere has attracted such guests as Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip.
The drive this day was probably the most scenic of the entire trip. First, we followed the shore of Loch Ness. Many stopped to visit the official Loch Ness Monster Exhibition to check out the latest news about Nessie. The special beauty of this place was the inspiration for many of the poems by Robert Burns. Great Britain's highest mountain, Ben Nevis, is 4,400 feet. It takes so many people to be caught up in the enthusiasm to make it work, to care what's happening all along the line so that nothing gets messed up. That you just can't keep on going to the well. Or I can't call Mike Sanchez and say, guess what, Mike, we're going again next year. We've got to do it all over again. The man will either commit suicide or... It just, it just can't be done, and, um, and that's, that's the reason why it's a once-in-a-lifetime trip, and I hope everybody realizes that.